All right, so today we're going to do a little work on my 2002 Lincoln LSE uh, with the 3.9 liter V8. So you can see, looks nice and clean. Yours may not look like this, uh, but we're going to start by taking the uh, plastic cover off here. It hides all the stuff that people don't want to see. So in order to get the black cover off, um, I'm going to take a little screwdriver and you see these plastic pieces here, you press down in the center and then you can then pry it up, okay? So I'd walk the screwdriver around a little bit as you pry. In fact, you probably want to use maybe two, one on the opposite corner. They'll come up pretty easy. Be careful, you don't want to break these and have to buy new ones. See, there you go. It's got a little plastic thin washer that we can get rid of underneath. And do that for the other one as well. Okay, so I got the second one out, and now this third one here, this is just a rubber, a rubber piece that you just simply pull up to get out. And that should be enough to get this cover off. Okay. Now you can see the guts. Okay, so now I'm going to start by removing the air filter um, kind of box here. Uh, and then this is your mass airflow sensor and you can see all the way up to your throttle body. So this whole air kind of intake unit, I'm gonna take off. So I'm gonna start basically by using my little screwdriver here and the way you get these connectors off, basically just push down. There's a little tab here that you push down. And at the same time, then you also slide it backwards. Okay, so since I have two hands, I'm gonna pause here. Okay, so you can see that, you know, that's come out. So I'll slide that away from the mass airflow sensor. And I'm gonna do the same with this one because I'm eventually gonna take this off as well. You can see the little clip is here that you have to press down on. Okay, so I'll press down on that and then I'll slide it back. And while you're pressing with one small screwdriver here, you can also take maybe a bigger screwdriver here and put it in between and then twist a little bit and that'll kind of push it back enough for you to then take over. I'm also gonna uh, take off this uh, aviator band here that's holding the mass airflow sensor neck uh, onto the rest of it here. So since this one's usually pretty tricky, I'm going to kind of demonstrate this one. So you press, I've got the little screwdriver here, I press it in on the left side, take this, and then I turn the screwdriver a little bit, see it pops out, and then I can take my fingers, slide it the rest of the way out. Okay? Easy. So this aviator clamp, you could take it off with a, a flat blade screwdriver, or you could really take an eight millimeter, I got a quarter inch drive socket here, uh, and then just go to town. Okay, now I'm gonna take off this air box here, where the air cleaner is. So there's two, there's two clips right here. I'm gonna pull back on the tab, let it disengage, kind of wiggle the bottom so it comes unclipped. Right, and now I have this whole thing up. So I did undid my aviator clip or loosened it. I didn't take it off all the way because then it's a little pain kind of re-threading it when you want to put it back on. So now I can kind of pull this out. Okay, wiggle it a little bit as you go. See, I've got this completely off. Be careful. Uh, you don't want to harm the mass airflow sensor. They're expensive and sensitive. Okay, so I'll set that over here. And now you can see, you can see this is where you get your air filter at. Okay, so this is really the right way to replace your air filter. You can basically do it by unclipping, unsnapping the top here, peeling it back, and then sliding one in. Uh, that's actually kind of how they designed it with this bottom that ends up hooking into the, um, these tangs down here. Okay, so I had already replaced this a while ago. Not looking too bad, so I'm gonna kind of leave that in there for now. Uh, this is where you'd end. If you replace this, there's a direction 
uh, of airflow uh, that you want to make sure that you follow. Uh, and then basically you put that in, you put this you know, back on right there like we showed. And then these things at the bottom, the tangs, you want to hook in and then snap the top back in. Once you do that, don't forget to plug back in your mass airflow sensor and that other one that we did. Okay, and then you tighten your band down there and then you put your cover back on for your engine if you still have one and that's how you do the uh, air cleaner change. So now I'm gonna go a little deeper here. Okay, so I've undone this bolt here. Okay, that was the eight millimeter and now it's held on one other place down there, but there's nothing to turn. You just simply pull it up. It's a little plastic peg in a rubber grommet. So you just kind of pull it up, comes up, tilt it out. Okay, that's what that looks like. And there's your big empty area, because I'm gonna need access to some of these areas in here. So that's why I took this out. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna take some of these tubes off um, so I can start getting this piece out. This kind of gets in the way when you're doing a lot of work. You can work around it most times, but you know if you were uh, putting in a new thermostat, which would be in this housing, uh, you can remove it without removing some of this stuff, but it's just a lot easier and cleaner um, when you do it properly. And then also when you remove some of this stuff, you can do some other things, like you can get in and maybe even uh, clean your throttle body, which we'll get into here in a little bit. So I'm gonna start by this hose right here. Uh, this one just pulls right off. So you can see, it just pulls right off just like that. And this clip is kind of an interesting one. Uh, if you haven't dealt with this before, it's pretty easy. I'm gonna take it off on this end because I'm gonna be getting into the valve covers and some work I'm gonna do later. So I'm gonna clean it up over here. So I'm gonna pinch, you see these like these grips one on each side, so you pinch those. That um, kind of unlocks it basically, and then you can just pop it right off. See, no problem. Um, then there's another one over here. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, pinch it, and then uh, pop it off. And this is a lot easier when you're not holding a camera, obviously. I'm gonna do that in a second. And then this one here, I'm gonna take this bolt off this is, uh, again, I'm gonna use a quarter inch drive. This is an 11 mil millimeter uh, deep well socket. So, okay, no problem. Even hand take off the nut there. It's got the attached washer. And basically when you take this thing off, you're gonna lift up because that stud is uh, down below, okay? And then also don't forget, there's another aviator clip over here. So I've already loosened that with a screwdriver. Nice and loose. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, put the camera down here, undo this one, and then we can uh, start taking this thing off. Okay, so I decided to take it off uh, here instead of here, just because again, I'm gonna move this whole thing out of the way. Uh, less tubes dangling around in my way. So with that off, you see I took that off. Now I just gotta wiggle it off. Yeah. Little body assembly here. Like that. Okay. And you can see now this whole air intake unit can be removed as one. And I'm starting to get a nice clean picture of what my engine actually looks like. You got the valve covers there, throttle body, valve covers there, and now we're talking. Okay, so if you're doing like a spark plug change or checking the coil line plug, because instead of a distributor, they have the coil line plug uh, in these newer engines. So there's actually this access panel right here on the valve cover, which kind of makes it cool if that's what you're wanting to do. Uh, what I like doing at this point, because I'm gonna be working on this car for another 10 years or so, uh, and these coil line plugs, once they start going, you're gonna have one go, you know, every five or 10,000 miles it seems. Uh, they're probably good for about 75,000 to 90,000 miles from based on my experience. Um, and then of course you will do your spark plug changes through this access panel as well. Uh, anytime you get an engine uh, trouble code, you'll kind of want to know, okay, what am I talking about? Am I talking about, you know, this side of the engine, passenger side, which is easy to get to, or am I talking about driver's side, which 
uh, is a pain to get to. Um, so I like to know, you know, it'll tell you the trouble code, what cylinder is misfiring potentially. So at this point, I like to label my uh, one. So I'll take a paint pen and I'll just write right on the plastic valve cover. And it actually stays on for quite a bit. So the firing order, not the firing order, but the cylinder locations on this V8 start on, like if you're looking at the car on the left side, uh, one, two, three, four, and then over to the driver's side, starting close to the front, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so firing order is different, but those are the cylinder numbers. So if you have like a cylinder seven misfire, then you're talking about driver's side, second to the uh, most far back there. So I'll start here and I'll just put like a one right in the general location. Okay, and that'll remind me that number one is always right there. And then I'll do two, three, four, uh, and then same on the other side. Kind of a helpful trick. Okay, so most of these on the left side are pretty straightforward to get at, except this one in the back there. So you just kind of got to work at getting the, um, got to work at getting your, your wrench down there. Okay, and there's this, um, some foam kind of padding has a little give, so you need a short socket, not a long deep well, otherwise you can't get it in there. So once you get it on there, you can uh, you know, break it loose. I would recommend coming down with your hand from underneath um, and getting it started, then you can kind of get it going here. So um, you know, once that one is significantly loose, maybe you can get it with your fingers the rest of the way. Okay, you gotta get your, get your socket out of there. And then you can see, you can come up with the rest of them. Um, they're pretty easy. They break loose uh, pretty well there. So you want to take all these out. And then you can get access to your spark plugs and your coils. Okay, so I've gotten all the bolts off and I've started to pull this away a little bit. I did use a little screwdriver just to get in there, just to get it started. Um, okay, so as you pull it out, you can see, you can start to see your coil on plugs right in there. Okay, and okay, should be good. Had a little, um, little RTV back there um, that was holding up, but really not sure why you'd have that since uh, this has its own press in place or, uh, gasket here. Okay, so like before, we were using the short uh, seven millimeter socket to get the access panel bolts off. Uh, now I'm switching over to a deep well um, to get these bolts. So there's one seven millimeter bolt that holds each one of these coils uh, on. Okay, so once you take that off, you can just pull them right out. Uh, the boot comes right off the uh, spark plug. So these are actually the exact same bolts as the ones holding the access panel on. So good job Ford value engineering there. Make sure we use the, the same bolt. So I took the bolt off this one already. It was pretty easy to get at. So you see it just kind of pops out. Pull that out. That's what that piece looks like. Uh, and then you can see, maybe you can't, you can see down there, that's the spark plug uh, down there. Okay, so if you're doing your spark plugs, uh, you'll want to take those off. You probably want to take them off one at a time. That's what I would recommend uh, so that you can not get confused at where you're at. And then you want to get a nice deep spark plug um, socket uh, to go down there and take it out. Okay, so a uh, little trick here. Um, because of this plastic cover here, it's kind of hard to get a long extension in. So you got your tried and true 5 8 inch deep well um, special for removing spark plugs, so it's got a little grommet in there, helps hold that spark plug in there. Um, you know, after you're done uh, getting it off the, you know, unscrewing it from the threads, it'll hold it and allow you to pull it out. So what I do is I put two uh, smaller extensions together instead of one long extension. What that does is that allows me to get this in there, and then I come back and I put my socket wrench on. Now these should be pretty easy to get off because hopefully the last time you did them or when you got the car 
Um, they had anti-seize on the spark plugs so they don't seize up in the hot engine. So it'd be pretty straightforward. And once you kind of feel it, it's not really turning in the threads anymore, you can kind of pull it out. Take the socket off. Okay, looks like I still have some to go. But see, I can basically just turn this extension by hand. Okay, once I do that, just should pull it right out, just like that. Okay, so on the driver's side here, I got this thing that's kind of in my way. So there's a couple bolts holding it on to the uh, shock tower here. So these are actually 13 millimeter bolts. So I'm gonna use a 13 millimeter and I got a nice long socket to keep out of the way over here. So I'm gonna move these, uh, or remove these and then move this thing out of the way. Okay, so I got this thing uh, unbolted, you see? So what I like to do is I like to put the, it, where it makes sense, put the nuts back on the studs. Um, you know, number one, you wanna label everything that you take off. Make sure you label it as to where it came off of. But also, um, you know, like in this situation, those studs are not going to be in the way of anything. So I kind of put them back on. Uh, keeps track of the hardware, but then also maybe prevents you from digging up, nicking the threads uh, when you're moving stuff around there as well. So I got this thing out of the way, so this should help me when I go to get the uh, valve cover access panel off here. So I'm going to start that, and I think we said those were 7 millimeter bolts. Okay, so a couple tips for this side because it's kind of difficult to get at. Um, I used a deep well a seven millimeter socket for all three of the top ones and then for the bottom front one. Uh, seems to work better. You're just able to spin the socket um, the socket wrench you know without getting into all the, the stuff close by the valve cover. So uh, this one in particular was difficult because oil dipstick was in the way. So you see what I did there, just pull the oil dipstick up. That gives you enough room to kind of come out with the socket. This one back here, um, so another tip, you know, I, I'd gotten it uh, to the point where you can almost hand spin it, but then I left the socket on it. So then I can just spin the socket the rest of the way, which is a little easier than if you grab the head of the bolt because you're at a um, farther, um, you know, a bigger diameter as you're spinning, gives you more torque. So, you know, that's the way that kind of cuts your time in half than using a socket wrench where you're only able to rotate it, you know, 20 degrees. Um, then I get the rest of the way out there. Okay, just a couple trips, tips there.